Hello everyone. In this video, the second in the series, I'll be removing the headstock from the mill, shown here, and disassembling the Z-axis, which includes the Z-axis slide and the lead screw. If you look up under the headstock behind the spindle, you see four bolts that are securing the headstock to the Z-axis slide. I've already turned the slide sideways for better pictures. Here you can see the four bolts, three of them in a circular pattern and one center bolt that the head pivots on. I loosen the top two bolts first and the center bolt, the top two bolts shown to the left in this picture. I loosen the bottom bolt last because it's easy to get to and I can support the mill head so that it doesn't fall over on its own. Once all four bolts are loose, the headstock can be rotated 90 degrees sideways and rested on the table. Resting the headstock on the left hand side makes it unnecessary to remove the down feed handle on the right hand side. Before the headstock can be removed from the z-axis slide, a set screw behind the down feed handle must be loosened. Here it can be seen partly sticking up out of the headstock. Here you can see on the z-axis slide the groove that that set screw drops into. Once all four fasteners are removed, the headstock can be jiggled and removed from the z-axis slide. The three outer bolts will slide to the bottom in the ring that they sit in. This makes putting it back together a bit difficult, but I 3D printed a jig that holds the bolts in the proper position. We'll cover this in an upcoming video. Here's a photo straight on of the back of the headstock, just for reference. And also the z-axis slide now that the headstock has been removed. I place the fasteners back where they came from. It makes reassembly simple when it's easy to find your hardware. Now that the headstock has been removed, we can start disassembling the Z-axis slide and lead screw assembly. I'll start by removing the Z-axis hand wheel. A single nut in the center and the hand wheel slides off the shaft. At the top of the column is a bearing cover. I removed the bearing cover which revealed the lead screw lock nuts and below that is the thrust bearing. I later discovered that removing this was not necessary for disassembly. Here I did things a bit out of order. The Z-axis hand wheel assembly should be removed first. Here you can see it the circular pillow block below the column top plate. I removed the column top plate first only to discover that the gear from the hand wheel would not allow the top plate and lead screw assembly to come free. You could of course remove the lead screw nuts and remove the thrust bearing on top but I found this way to be easier in the end. After removing the four screws from the pillow block, the Z-axis hand wheel assembly comes out with little fuss. Now the Z-axis slide, lead screw, and column top plate are all free to move up slightly. The accordion-like Z-axis way cover has to be removed. I removed the two horizontal screws, which unfastened both the Z-axis way cover and the Y-axis way cover. I left the other two screws in place in the aluminum angle. With the weight cover disconnected, I turned my attention to the Z-axis gib. I removed the upper Z-axis gib adjustment screw, and the Z-axis gib, shown here up against the dovetail, slid up and out easily. The next step is to separate the Z-axis slide from the lead screw. There are two cap head screws which secure the slide to the slide alignment block. Remove these two screws. Now, with the lead screw loose and the gib removed from the Z-slide, the Z-axis slide can be slid up and removed from the column. Here is the disassembled Z-axis slide. You can see the Z-axis gib, the gib screw, and I also lifted out one of the headstock mounting bolts just so you could see what it looked like. Notice that the Z-axis lead screw is only supported at the top. It's not connected to anything at the bottom. This is the slide alignment block that the slide bolts to. In this photo, I've started to pull it out to remove it. It just slides out. Here's a back view of the slide alignment block resting on top of the cylindrical boss that it slides over. And now with everything out of the way, the Z-axis lead screw can be lifted out the top of the column. Leaving the lead screw attached to the column top plate prevents the lead screw from dropping down inside the column. And here's just another shot of the Z-axis lead screw assembly and the top of the stripped column. Finally, I have put some of the hardware back in place so I know where it is for reassembly. In the next video, I'll be disassembling the X-axis and table. Subscribe if you want to follow along.
there's more content to come. I've been doing quite a bit of shopping for the electronics and getting the parts together. Take care until next time.